You are 16 year old. Uh. Uh. Astyanax. That doesn't sound right. Astyanax. Astyanax? Astyanax. Astyanax? Astyanax. Huh. Okay, well, you are Astyanax, however you pronounce it, and you are a 16-year-old student at Greenview High. A beautiful girl has been invading your dreams, and she's being held captive, but you're not sure where. Without noticing, the sky changes colors, and the sun becomes a blinding ball of purple fire. Suddenly, you're approached by a fairy named Cutie that gives you an axe and tells you it's your job to save Princess Rosebud or you'll never see your home again. Astyanax is a single-player action platformer published by Jalico in 1990. In typical NES fashion, you can use the A button to jump and the B button to attack. You begin the game wielding a magical axe called Bash. As you fight your way through Astyanax's six levels, you'll come across weapon power-ups which take the form of a little axe icon. These power-ups will cycle through three available weapons when collected. The axe becomes the spear, the spear becomes the sword, and finally the sword will cycle back to the axe. They each have their own unique, although basic, properties. The axe is well-rounded, the spear is the weakest but allows you to cast magic more efficiently, and the sword is the most powerful but also makes your magic cost more. At the bottom of the screen, you'll notice a power gauge that fills automatically when you're not attacking. This gauge controls the power of your attack, and if you attack while your gauge is full, you'll maximize your damage. The length of this gauge can be increased by collecting these power supply power-ups, which in turn increases the strength of your powered-up attacks. This system reminds me of Secret of Mana on the Super Nintendo, where you have to wait around while your weapon charges up to deal any kind of meaningful damage. As I alluded to previously, you also have access to three magic spells, which you can swap between by pausing the game and using the D-pad. You can use the Bind spell, which freezes enemies and doesn't cost much magic power, the Blast spell, which fires multiple projectiles around your character, and finally the Bolt spell, which is the most powerful, but also the most expensive to cast. As you may have already noticed, Astyanax features some impressively large sprites, but the quality of the artwork varies wildly. I realize this is a bit subjective, but Astyanax looks pretty cool despite the fact that he's 16 years old and built like some kind of hulking warrior, but just look at this guy right here. When I first saw this enemy, I was immediately reminded of another game I reviewed previously in the NES Abridge series, Ghoul School. Now tell me that is and some ghoul school looking stuff. While we're on the subject of previous NES abridged videos, the platforming in Astyanax reminds me of yet another review, Swordmaster. As you may recall, I had this to say about the platforming in Swordmaster. Well, let's just get this out of the way right now. The platforming sucks. Yeah, I said it, the platforming sucks. Sadly, Astyanax does not have the cool boss fights which made Swordmaster worth playing, and to be fair, the controls in Astyanax are a bit more responsive, but overall, they really do have a similar feel to them. You also suffer the same kind of extreme knockback effect when taking a hit from enemies, and this leads me to a portion of the review which I'd like to call, Will It Hit Me? Here's our first clip. Now, I ask you, will this hit me? Yes, it will. How about this? Do you think this will hit me? Once again, yes it will. Finally, how about this one? Yes, of course it will. Spoilers, the answer is always yes. I don't know if it's due to the size of Astyanax's sprite, or the size of the enemies, or some combination of the two, but the hitboxes in this game seem outrageously large and sometimes just not right. This issue makes it difficult to determine the distance from which you can safely attack your enemies. In Homer's epic Greek poem, the Iliad Astyanax was the son of the Trojan Prince Hector who was famously slain in single combat by Achilles. Achilles was also slain by an arrow striking him at his only weak point, his heel, giving rise to the term Achilles heel, which has come to mean a critical point of weakness. 
In myth, Astyanax also suffers a tragic fate that I won't get into here since the stories range from disturbing to straight up horrifying, but Astyanax for the NES's Achilles heel to me is simply its bone dry dullness. I mean, the most entertaining part of the whole game was this pink Skeletor looking guy. When you encounter him, the characters call him Thorn Dog, and I thought they were making fun of him, like calling him names or something, but no, that's actually his name, Thorn Dog. The story is completely nonsensical and silly, especially the ending, which wouldn't be such a crime if there wasn't a ton of existing mythology to draw from. The power-ups and magic, while they serve their purpose, are broadly uninteresting and the gameplay itself is subpar and just feels kinda sloppy. I think there was potential in Astian X that simply wasn't realized, and the game kind of feels soulless, like it was born out of a middle management meeting and shipped out to the game factory where the developers stared at the clock watching painful seconds tick by until 5 p.m. when they'd finally be free and as such I give Astian X an uninspired 2 out of 5. Astyanax was the son of the Trojan Prince Hector, who was famously sane in King of the 